Hair products are a big business. Chemical straighteners, hair dyes, perms, you name it. But are we paying for these fashion choices with our health? Health headlines would have you believe so, but we're not so sure. That's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. Way back in 2019, we covered a study on the link between breast cancer and the use of hair dyes and chemical straighteners. We covered why there was no need to be alarmed about the association reported there. Well, now there's a new study on these hair products, this time reporting an association with uterine cancer. The research uses data from the same place as the breast cancer research previously covered, the sister study which from 2003 to 2009 collected data from over 50,000 women in the U.S. and Puerto Rico between the ages of 35 and 74 whose sister had breast cancer. If you've seen the news reports, you may have seen that this new study is reporting an increased risk of uterine cancer of over 80%, and that sounds pretty scary. But this is the relative risk, not the absolute risk, as we've covered in many, many previous episodes, the absolute risk is what really matters. So what was the absolute risk in this study? The increase in the absolute risk of developing uterine cancer for women who straighten their hair four or more times per year was just 0.03% per patient year, meaning 0.03% of these women developed uterine cancer during each year of the study. Note that there was not a significant difference in risk between women who never used these products and women who reported using them less than four times per year. The risk only became significant for those reporting use more than four times per year. So I guess that means that you're good if you use these products three times a year, but not five times a year. Uh, who knows? And these data are all self-reported, so it's hard to say if the actual number of times used were even accurately reported. Memory is notoriously unreliable. Also note that no association was found between cancer risk and the use of permanent, semi-permanent, and temporary dyes. There was also no increased cancer risk associated with the use of bleach, highlights, and perms. One of the main underlying hypotheses here is that these hair products are endocrine disruptors, or chemicals that mimic or interfere with hormones. If this were true, it seems confusing that only some of the products would do that. Adding to the confusion, the related study on breast cancer found that cancer risk increased for permanent dyes, but not semi-permanent or temporary. Lots of mixed signals here. And as reported by others, the risk was no longer significant in women who exercise, and the study may be biased because it necessarily had to study people who had not had a hysterectomy, meaning they'd had their uterus removed. The women reporting straightener use tended to be younger, and people who get hysterectomies tend to be older. So it's possible that a bunch of women who would have gotten uterine cancer and do not use these hair products weren't included in the study simply because they'd had a hysterectomy. The evidence may suggest a risk, albeit a small one, but it's hard to say that it's a risk worth changing your hair routine for. Hey, did you enjoy this video? You might enjoy this previous video on whether hair dye is linked to breast cancer. We'd appreciate it if you'd like the video, subscribe to the channel down below, and consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillaholm, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.